building a discipleship culture. Firstly, as we know, discipleship is living by faith in Christ, walking in the spirit and resting in God's grace. So discipleship is the process of helping someone grow towards maturity and multiplication. So it involves teaching, training, mentoring, and guiding a person towards spiritual growth. It's not program-centric, but relational. And it is not limited to individuals or groups, but the whole church. Great commission in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Therefore, go. Clear emphasis that each one of the followers of Christ, as you go into the world, it might be you're in the business world, IT industry, the healthcare, wherever you are, your priority is to make disciples, to share the good news of the cross. Your priority is to tell the rule of the right king and how they can come out from the oppression of the evil king, Satan. The second thing is to embrace a culture of discipleship. I think it begins by asking God to expand our hearts with his love. God's heart is so big. Different cultures, background, dresses, different things. God loves all people. We are commanded to make disciples of all nations is uh, a link with the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Through you, nations will be blessed. Paul is emphasizing that in Romans 4, 16 to 25 and Galatians 3, 6 to 9. It's the church, friends, you and I, that is called to bless the nation. The key to discipleship is obedience. Discipleship is a culture embraced by the church, God's community, group of redeemed persons who walk on earth today, giving glory to God. God wants to receive glory. How? Cross unites. Religion divides. Church is described as the body where different members are connected together and they grow. The church is God's plan to bring hope and healing to this broken world. They have a catalytic role to perform. John 10.10, 10, the church's mission is to be a fullest possible growth of disciples, nurturing and empowering life in their relational and social context. The question is, why spiritual disciplines? Why do we celebrate community? Why are we committed to each other as a body of Christ? These are all very important questions. The reason is God's purpose for your life and my life is to reflect Christ in our interpersonal relationship. Being a disciple of Christ, I think the first question we need to ask is, are people seeing Christ in me? So into Christ-likeness, Paul is emphasizing that in Ephesians 4, 13 to 16 and 24. Disciples should be a community marked by profoundly changed lives. Disciples are to grow in grace, in spiritual maturity, in character, in love, self-control, perseverance, peace, joy, humility, kindness and patience. We are not following a religion, a relationship. Hallelujah. And Christ is transforming me daily. It is a process. I'm committed to that. Historic plagues and Christian response. It's an article by Brian Jess. Plagues in the Asian world resulted in the lack of caregivers. Plague in Athens, 430 BC. Christ's care for the sick was counter-cultural plague that hit the city of Carthage in 252 AD. Remember, that was a time when Christians were being persecuted among uh, because of the Roman emperor Domitian. The sick and the dying were neglected while bodies began to fly up in the streets with no one to bury them. Church did. They chose not to ignore the crisis. It tells us, church, how important it is to have a true understanding of the church and be committed to the local body. We are not a group of perfect people. We are saints working in progress. We love each other. We show unconditional love. We extend the forgiveness of God. We extend the love of God in our interpersonal relationship, drawing it from the Lord with whom we are connected. Discipleship cannot be in isolation. It has to be fleshed out in our commitment to the community. A radical commitment to the community is vital, which can lead to the community embracing discipleship as a culture. It is such a culture that will help us to see both quality and quantity growth. Being committed to the local Local church is non-negotiable if we are a disciples of Jesus Christ. So while personal disciplines have to be followed individually, corporately, or to pray, to celebrate, to do good works, it's important. Church as a community, if we are not committed to each other, we can never develop character. If you, if there is no misunderstanding, we don't learn to forgive. If there is no challenges, we don't lay, learn to share love and accept each other unconditionally. What is quality growth? We should be avoiding the danger of bringing in marketplace principles into the church. Christ is the head. He has to direct the church. And what is he looking for? The process of discipleship is a 
accomplish best by working one to one. So the Lord wants each of us to be discipled and also taking up someone and ensuring them to reach their God given potential through a relational process. God has given you a lot of talents, blessings. Can you embrace someone who is struggling it's like a safety net? The Lord is putting into your heart to love them and engage them in their space and work. Don't be critical, but we should show the grace, but at the same time, tell the truth. That is discipleship. And ultimately, it's going to be the quality of our Christian life, create the maximum impact. People may oppose our preaching, but who can oppose our living the gospel? Robert E. Coleman is saying is, as a church, as a community, looking out for my brother, my sister, how can I contribute towards that? Continuing in that love relationship with the Lord. The reality of the gospel will come when believers come to fulfill God's mandate, not to fulfill some human agenda, radically committed to the local church and growing in God's ways. And also we are growing in our love for each other. We need to bring it practically down. There is a link between the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. As a disciple, am I discipling people in the areas of my influence? That's the goal we need to have. The emphasis in the Great Commission is as you go, the book of Acts, the disciples, wherever they went, they gossiped the gospel. I think we need to have a great passion for the gospel. That is going to make the difference. That this message of salvation, which is a gift of God, is the only message that can bless the nation. David Baxter on discipleship. True multiplication occurs when disciples are trained in evangelism and disciple building. Lord Jesus asked his disciples to make disciples and even if they find that the making of disciples is difficult, they work at it and they trust in the Holy Spirit for help. Yes, it's challenging. But church, remember, all of us are called to be disciples by intentionally embracing a discipleship culture, by taking the word and applying it in our own lives and helping others in the church to apply it. That reflects our quality leading to quantity. We disciple so many people. Those we disciple leave us very disappointed. So should we continue discipleship? John 6 verse 66. Many disciples left Jesus. Don't give up. Embracing a discipleship culture. We need to avoid the two extremes being triumphalistic or being morbid. Triumphalistic because what has been done, God has done. We're just instruments in his hand. On the other hand, I'm extremely morbid. Oh, nothing is going to happen. Let's give up. Let's take care of ourselves, but we commit ourselves to the Lord's hand. We make God's agenda our agenda. He has promised to be with us. Church, let us be passionately committed to the local congregation. Loving each other with deep love. Believing that, yes, God has made me a part of the local church for a purpose. As you are going into the world, wherever you are, is your passion to make disciples, both individually, as a family, corporately, as a body. Are you committed to being disciples and making others disciples? Are you willing to ensure that that nobody in the church community is outside the net of discipleship. Each one is covered so that they move into the potential that God has. We are going to see a beautiful quality growth, which is going to spur quantity growth. May the Lord abundantly bless us as we ask the Lord to help us. 